All right. Well, hey, everybody. Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. What we're going to be talking about today is this little regulated guy right here. This comes from United Society of Vape. It's called the ARC because it's ARC shaped. Anyway, dual 18650 regulated box mod. In order to get to know this just a little bit better, what we're going to do is go up close as we always do. Yeah, quick, short, uppy, closey time. Go. <clears throat> All right, yeehaw. Well, this is the USV United Society of Vape ARC mod, and it's a it's a funny shaped little mod. The button's on the back here, but we're going to talk more about that later. Very clicky fire button, very clicky up, down adjustment buttons, and then this is your display. Battery door on the bottom. Sled's pretty clearly marked negative and positive so when you put this battery in you want the negative touching that side and when you put this battery in you want the positive touching that side close it up easy enough and here's the bummer part every time you put batteries in this new batteries in this it defaults to five watts every time. I'm going to attach this fire luke mesh here. We're going to adjust the wattage up to where I normally vape it, which is around 60 watts. And what's great about this interface is as soon as you get to 10 watts, as soon as you get to 10 watts, it starts adjusting in one watt increments, thankfully. So let's say I'm rocking this fire luke mesh at 65 watts. I have the tank on there still and I go, oh, look, I need to change my batteries. So I pull this out, batteries come out, batteries go back in, turns back on. Where's it going to go? Defaults to five watts. Every time you put your batteries in, you have to readjust your wattage and that fucking sucks. And as you go through different powers, the color's gonna change. You get up here into the yellow area. It's kind of like, uh, what, what are you doing? That's a 0.17 at 96 watts. You know that, right? As soon as you get into the hundreds, it's gonna start turning orange and being like, seriously, you're gonna rock a 0.17 at 131 watts. When you get too far out of the range, it's like, Yellow, finally red. It's like, okay, you have a 0.17. Why you have it at 227 watts? Red. Don't do that. So like I said, I like to rock this at 65 watts. It turns a nice shade of welcoming blue. Like, yes, this is fine. Three clicks on the power button gets you through all of the menus that you need to. One, two, three, and you can switch it into temperature control mode for nickel, titanium, or stainless steel. If you want to switch it to titanium, you hold both of these right here, switches over to titanium. Switch, push these right here, switches over to stainless steel. One, two, three, puts you in bypass pass mode, which is at default 240 watts. I haven't been able to use any topper currently built right now at this bypass mode because 240 watts, yeah, dude, it's a lot. It's honestly too much, and that's why I don't use bypass mode on this. And then three more gets you back to power. Now down here, you have this. You see this? N E S. What's that? Well, these are different power profiles on here, which I've never used. N stands for normal, E stands for eco, and S stands for sport. Vaping with all of these, I have not noticed a difference in anything. Battery life, power, voltage, anything. But if you really want to and you want to switch over to sport mode, you'd hold these, it's going to go to eco, you hold these, it's going to go to sport, you hold these, it's going to go back to normal. I just rock this in wattage mode on normal and it's fine. I don't know what the point of eco mode is, and I don't know what the point of sport mode is. I can't find that information anywhere. And one thing I didn't mention that you probably noticed when I was switching back and forth between normal, eco, and sport mode is the wattage changes, but you can just change it back. So if you can switch it, if you're in 65 watts and you turn into sport mode and it drops to 63 watts, you can switch it back to 65 watts in sport mode. And as far as I can tell, those modes, that's all that changes is it drops your wattage about one watt. And I, I still don't know what they're for. And one last thing I wanted to show you up close and personal here is this band on here, this aluminum band around the plastic housing. It sits nice and flush all the way around until you get to the back here. The bottom and the top kind of swoop down and then the band stays flat. And I'm not saying you're going to cut yourself, but this is a fairly sharp edge right here, man. On both sides, this little edge that sticks out right here is sharp. It feels sharp and uncomfortable. Just seems like an odd choice to have that part not swoop down and remain this flat, rigid, aluminum sharp edge on there. But anyway, yeah, that's kind of all there is up close and personal. Let's get back out to normal view. Let's vape this thing. So yeah, there's not a whole hell of a lot to see up close and personal. One of the things that confused me, and I'm sure is confusing a lot of people, is that button placement. That button placement on the back seems weird at first, doesn't it? Because we're used to holding our mods like this, and then we'd have either like maybe a fire button here, maybe a fire button here as well, so you can hit it with your thumb or your finger. This mod is actually very comfortable to hold. I kind of just 
put it on my fingers like this and then I use my thumb on the back to press the button and sometimes, not often, but sometimes I will put a pinky in this area right here underneath to kind of give it a little bit more support. Just as comfortable in the left hand as it is in the right hand. I really do think this mod just looks very cool. I'm not a huge fan of the white and red one that I have. There's some black ones, black and blue, that look very cool as well. It's just a very cool looking mod. Unfortunately, I do have a couple gripes with it. It really bums me out that when you open the battery door or you swap out the batteries and you turn it back on, it defaults to five watts. No matter where you had it set before, no matter what topper you had on top, five watts is the starting setting with new batteries and come on that sucks i'm a wattage guy so i only run this in wattage mode and at 63 watts on this particular tank it gives me plenty plenty of power and my second gripe is with the bypass the bypass mode defaults to 240 watts and that makes very little sense to me i don't have a topper on my desk right now, filled up and ready to go that I could run at 240 watts. I wish that the bypass mode on this was just a dual parallel configuration or even just a straight up series configuration because the batteries are in here in series. So I feel like bypass would be cool if it just went to straight series mode. And then you could run something like a 0.4 ohm dual fuse Clapton on here and have a hot series build. But that 240 watts, I don't really find that useful or usable. The last gripe with this mod comes from that annoying thing that mods do sometimes. And it's not what you're thinking. There isn't a delay when you press the button. When you press the button, it just fires right away. There's no delay there. What happens is when your mod goes to sleep after a few minutes, if I set it on my desk and I'm fiddling on my iPhone, double tapping some IGs, and then I go to pick it back up again and I press the button to vape, it doesn't vape. You have to click the button to power it back on and then you can vape. And I find that incredibly annoying. So even though this mod is one of the coolest looking mods I've used, one of the most comfortable mods, even with the button on the back, it's just very comfortable to hold. The board defaulting to five watts when you take the batteries out and then having to turn it back on every time it goes to sleep before you can vape. Those are two really big bummers that make me enjoy this mod a lot less. I will I will say the display on it is very nice. It's big, it's colorful, it's bright, it tells you everything you need to know, and it's just overall really nice display to have on there. Now you're kind of going to need your vape budget hands if you're taking a look at this mod. I found them on the United Society of Vape webpage for about $80. Now I know that cost and value are always in the eye of the consumer, and if this mod was free from the issues that I have with it, I could easily see paying $80 for a mod that is this well built and looks this cool. But because I have those complaints about it, I can't really justify spending $80 on something I know that is going to frustrate me when I vape it. And I know that whole pressing the button to wake it up before you vape thing is kind of a minor gripe, but when it happens five or six, seven, eight times a day, it becomes a huge annoyance. So yeah, I really generally like USV and I really generally love the styling of their products. They just make very cool looking products. But I don't think they really hit it out of the park with this arc mod. I think it looks cool. I think it's got a really unique and comfortable design, but I feel like they really missed the mark on a couple things chip wise. And if those things can be fixed with like a future firmware update, I would be very much into that. As it stands right now, the gripes I have with this mod uh, kind of makes me not want to use it very much. And that's really a huge bummer because dude, it looks so cool and is so comfortable to hold. I'm going to throw some links down in the description to where you can check this out if you are interested, but that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me, and as always, yeah, let's keep on vaping. <laughs>